The Pokemon company definitely wants to send off Sword and Shield into the sunset with a bang because they just announced their craziest competitive format ever. Let's talk about it. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me because we have so much news we need to cover. Last night, Pokemon actually announced their next format for competitive online battles. Now, typically these have a rolling rule set, but they kind of fluctuate between things we've seen before, like no restricted legendaries, which are the ones that you have like for your, you know, your Mewtwo's, your Kyogre's, your Groudon's, like things you've seen on the covers of games before. Sometimes they allow them, sometimes they don't, sometimes they allow one, sometimes they allow two. But last night, they announced the biggest shakeup I have ever seen. And I'm not going to spoil it just yet. We're going to take a look at the official announcement, but they have announced something we've never seen. It is going to be earth shattering and honestly makes having just two restricted Pokemon on your team look small by comparison. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in, take a look at exactly what you can expect in 30 days when the new format goes live. I am so excited and I can't wait to share this with you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to dive right into that announcement as well as some sample teams I put together for you guys. But before we do, I just want to take a second to ask if you like the videos we have here on the channel. Please make sure that you actually like them by hitting that thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community and to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. And by the way, it really helps the channel out a ton, so thanks in advance. But all right, let's go ahead and get into that announcement because it is just awesome. All right, so coming to us live from Victory Road, one of the premier places to go and get VGC information. We're actually going to talk about them in just a minute, but Series 13 is going to be kicking off on September 1st until the end of October Halloween. And check this out, guys. All Pokemon are allowed without restrictions at all. So your box legendary Pokemon, your restricteds, bring as many as you want. And guess what? While you're doing that, go ahead and bring your mythical Pokemon as well. So we are finally seeing mythicals in VGC for the first time ever. Now, just think about that for a second, because you may kind of just gloss over that and say, so what? Some mythicals are really strong. We're going to have access to Mew, Celebi, Victini, uh, Manaphy, if I'm not mistaken, as well as some of the newer ones like Magearna. And we're going to talk about all that because they are just so unbelievably powerful. But we are finally having an opportunity to see what these Pokemon are going to be able to do. Because for the last two months of basically Sword and Shield, we are going to be able to use any Pokemon we want. Now, I just want to go ahead and give you an idea of what Pokemon I'm talking about. So, like I said with the box legendaries, you have your Mewtwo, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Kyogre Groudon, Rayquaza, Dialgapalkia, Giratina, Reshiram, Zekrom, Kyurem, Xerneas, Yveltal, Zygarde, um, and then you have Solgaleo, Lunala, uh, Calyrex, and then you have your dogs. So the other cool thing is you get all the merge forms also. So you can have like Black Kyurem, White Kyurem, or like Dustman Necrozma, uh, Dawnwing Necrozma, or the Fused Rider Horses. Uh, so it's really awesome. But in addition, our mythical Pokemon here, you know, we have Magearna, Marshadow. All these Pokemon are so unbelievably strong. And like, if you think about it, a lot of them have base 100 stats across the board which is pretty good because that's a lot of natural bulk. Um, the ones that really stand out to me as being very problematic almost, Magearna has this ability called Soul Heart, where if it KOs a Pokemon, it gets a special attack boost. And I also think if another one dies in battle, it may trigger. So if you're, for example, pairing it up with a Kyogre and it hits a Water Spout and KOs both of your opponent's Pokemon, I believe you're going to get actually two boosts. If, if I'm mistaken about that, let me know. Again, I haven't played a lot with Magearna because, quite frankly, I haven't been allowed to. We also know Marshadow is awesome because it can steal people's boosts. So there's a lot we have to work with here. And I put together some sample teams based on what we see that I think are going to use a lot of these really well. So let's go ahead and just take a look real quick. This is from the North American International Championship. I just want to show you guys the kind of archetypes that exist when we have two restricted Pokemon. So first place, we have James Evans, who we used um, Calyrex Shadow and Groudon. And then, like, in second place, we had Zacian and uh, Kyogre, which is pretty straightforward. You know, Swordfish, that's an amazing team. And then we see, like, Groudon Lunala, Palkia, and uh, Ice Rider Calyrex. So, typically, Zacian is, like, the most versatile, followed right behind by Kyogre. Um, so, really, you see that with a lot of utility Pokemon, like Venusaur and um, Incineroar. So, this is kind of what we're used to seeing when we have just one or two restricted Pokemon. Now, let's take a look at what's possible if you have as many as you want, and Mythicals. So here's the first team I threw together. 
I wanted to use at least one mythical for each team, and for this one I'm using Victini. Now you may wonder why I'm using Victini, because a lot of people say it's kind of mediocre. Check this out. I ran this calc because I was curious. So Vcreate is a base 180 physical fire move. If it is just adamant with 252 attack, even if Zacian Crowned is max defense, max HP, it is still a guaranteed one hit KO on it. Now look, if you've played VGC, you know why that's so busted. Zacian is kind of difficult to take down, so the fact that it can just go out and just blast it is so awesome. And on top of that, it also has, with the Choice Scarf I used on this set, it can actually outspeed max speed Zacian, which is just very impressive to me. But let's go ahead and look at the rest of the team first, and we'll work our way down to Victini. So, obviously, I think on a team like this, Incineroar is going to be incredibly important. Um, you're going to have a lot of Pokemon getting out of hand with their stat boosts. Um, you also need a way to reduce things like... Marshadow is actually quite scary to me because it can steal boosts with its Spectral Thief. So, if it, like, nabs your Zacian Crowns plus one, you need a way to kind of reset that to neutral to kind of just keep it under control. It still is very strong, but, you know, being able to at least rein that in a little bit, I think is really important. Uh, as far as the item on here, I didn't go for EVs on all the teams, um, just because it's going to be heavily dependent on what you think the meta is and kind of how you think the Pokemon interact with each other. But I did put down sample moves and items to give you guys an idea of what you would use. But... On this um, Incineroar here, I decided to use a Pasho Berry. I feel like Kyogre is going to become kind of a pinch hitter on teams. So, like, what do I mean by that? I think that Kyogre has the potential to really... Because there's going to be so much power floating around now, Kyogre is probably going to be able to come in at the end and just start blasting water spouts. So I wanted a way Incineroar could survive that and then, like, reduce it and switch out or just buy me time. It needs to take one hit to be able to just hopefully get a KO on it or whatever it's par partnered with. So I feel like Pasho Berry may be a useful item. We've been seeing things like Shooka Berry to deal with Groudon. So I don't know. I think this is a viable option. If you don't think so, let me know. Either way, um, just an idea I had. But as far as the Restricteds, I wanted to go with the Groudon team here um, because I really like the idea of pairing Drought with Decreate because it does so much damage. But even more than that, Victini has this ab amazing ability called Victory Star which raises the accuracy of itself and its ally by 10%. So Groudon's Precipice Blades are going to go from 85% accuracy to another 10%, which would be, what is that, like 93, 94? So that's pretty dang good. Um, that's going to make it a lot more consistent because everybody knows Precipice Blades misses now and then, and it's it's really, really awesome that you're going to get that benefit. Um, on top of that, I just want to go for kind of a basic stock set here. Swords Dance, Protect, Rock Slide, and Precipice Blades. Again, even increasing Rock Slide's accuracy to uh, 99%. That is going to be pretty awesome, I think. Um, so just being able to abuse that is pretty cool. And, you know, Victini, again, with the Sun, is going to do a lot of neutral damage with V-Create. Um, and we also have, you know, because we are a physical version here, um, Wild Charge, U-Turn, and Zen Headbutt. Um, Victini's move pool is a little shallow if you're going physical. It has just a weird smattering of moves. Um, so I decided to go just this set here because it's pretty stock. Um, and actually I think Zen Headbutt is a pretty justifiable move because of Marshadow being Ghost and Fighting. It just gives you some options and you should be able to outspeed it with Choice Scarf, so pretty solid there. But of course, as we are running a Sun Package, I like Venusaur here. Um, one thing I think is really cool, it's going to be able to handle those Kyogres really well and those Zacians really well with Leaf Storm and Earth Power. But as we all know, Sleep Powder is only 75% accurate. With that 10% boost, you're looking at like an 82, 83. That's still not amazing, but it's a lot better. And, you know, people have been running things like, instead of a Focus Sash, which I wanted here because I believe Uveltal is going to be a lot more common, so I wanted a way to survive like an Airstream. But if you have like a Wide Lens, people have been using Wide Lens Venusaur before to get off those very, very accurate Sleep Powders. And now you're getting the benefit of that with your Victini, and instead you do have access to your Focus Sash, which instead, oh, I can't type, my bad, uh, Focus Ash to allow you to survive those hits. And of course, with Sun, you're going to be incredibly fast. Oh yeah, and it should definitely be G-Max. Always make sure you're being a source of G-Max because that that repetitive damage is just, just so good. Now we have our Sun Core here, which is just, I think is just busted. But I want to finish that off with kind of just the best Pokemon you can have, which is going to be Zacian Crown and Kyogre. 
Now, I want to talk about Kyogre first because I think there's something really funny here. I decided to go with Salt Vest just because it's a nice, solid option, especially with, like, Magirna's running around. I mean, you're going to resist Flash Cannon, but Magirna has that Flur Cannon, I think it's called, and it's like a 120 base fairy move. We need to be able to take that, so I think Assault Vest is going to help with that quite a bit. But your Origin Pulses that are only 85% accurate, <laughs> with a Victory Star that's going to be in the 90s, so just another awesome thing that just happens to work with. And, you know, again, even if you're, like, your Venusaur is probably going to die early, or your Groudon, so there's really no benefit, there's no, like, cost to bringing in your Kyogre and adding Rain, because, again, I think it's just going to be a pinch hitter. It comes in, blasts one or two big moves, and just clears up the board. So I don't think it's, even though we have both weathers, I don't think it's a, a conflict that much. And then Zacian here, I decided to run a pretty stock set, protect Behemoth Blade and Play Rough. I want Play Rough now, because I feel like, you know, I know Yveltal is going to be more common, as is Marshadow. So being able to have a, you know, fairy move that can check that, I think is kind of important. Um, Behemoth Blade, obviously, is the standard because it doubles. You have to use that. And I think a lot of people forget it has Fire Fang. It's not incredible, but at plus one, Fire Fang plus Sun can actually do quite a lot of damage to your uh, opposing Magirnas, which, like, Magirna is going to be pretty, you know, heavily used. So I think it's very, very interesting to just have an option to check that. And even if you don't Oko it, like, even being able to deal half to it, and then, you know, pick up another KO with, like, your Incineroar or Victini or whatever, I feel like that is going to be just awesome and is going to be a huge help for this team. Now, I want to go ahead and move to the next team, and speaking of Magirna, we're actually going to be using it for that one. And as you guys can see here, I made what is actually a bit of a Trick Room team here. So, Magirna is fairly slow, rocking a base 65 speed. So, I decided to pair it with Calyrex Ice and Palkia, all of which have access to Trick Room in one like form or another. Now, I decided to use, and I decided to take advantage of Magirna's natural bulk here. You know, dual 115s is pretty solid. In addition to that stupid 130 special attack. And yeah, Floor Cannon. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a 130 base fairy move. Um, I decided to go for a sort of Trick Room attacker here and use Calm Mind. The reason I decided to do that is if you get off one Calm Mind, you're going to be able to take hits from things like Kyogre a lot better. And you'll have that plus one special attack. So you can just Dynamax and start knocking Pokemon down. And it's going to, so hard is going to get out of hand the same way like the um, uh, Chilling Day is going to for Calyrex Ice. So yeah, it's pretty set, pretty stock set here. Nothing crazy, but I think if you get this thing in Trick Room, it's going to be an absolute house to be reckoned with. Calyrex Ice, I decided to go Trick Room Protect, Glacial Lance, and High Horsepower. I opted to go for a weakness policy on this one. Uh, the reason being, I think it's just really useful to get those plus two attacks. I know, I think weakness policy is going to be a lot more reserved and maybe not used as much now that we have Marshadow running around. But that being said, I'm not going to be typically activating my plus two unless I'm already in Trick Room. So because of that, I think it's, it's a pretty solid option, quite frankly. And, um... You know, having high horsepower to give boost to special defense. Again, we kind of already talked about why that's important, and I think that's very true here as well. The Kyogre is going to be a pretty similar one to what we had before. Again, I think all the reasons why Assault Vest is good are still very valid here. Um, one thing I think is pretty cool also, by bringing this Rain Package, it's going to reduce the fire moves you're going to have to take from Magirna and Calyrex Ice. So again, those V-Creates are going to be real scary, but they are still going to be able to be maintained a little bit better. I think the only difference between this one and kind of the previous one we saw, I think on this one, you'd probably just run a little bit speed, a little less speed, probably almost min speed to kind of win the speed tie in Trick Room between yourself and other Kyogres. Um, and since we're bringing that rain, I wanted to bring Palkia. Um, it's a very bulky Trick Room setter. Uh, I know a lot of people have not, a lot of people have been using it as a Trick Room setter because even though it has base 100, it still underspeeds a lot of stuff like the Zacians, the, uh, you know, Calyrex Shadow, stuff like that. So it seems a little strange, but it really is actually a very good Trick Room setter, and I think it's really awesome here. Plus, just having that Hydro Pump Life Orb boosted with the Rain, it just does a lot of damage. And, you know, because it's part Dragon, it's not going to have the same kind of 
you know, issues that a lot of water Pokemon have because things like grass and electric are going to be neutral. It is weak to fairy, which is obviously a really big issue when you have things like this running around. But that being said, it is fairly bulky. And, you know, obviously we have good switch-ins for fairy moves, particularly like Kyogre. So I don't think it's that big a deal. It's not ideal by any means, but I think it's okay. And I really wanted to round that off with our Incineroar here. Again, it's, it's pretty much the same set I had before. I think I really like Snarl on this team because we need a way, again, if Magearna gets out of hand or you get like, again, a Calm Mind here or there on something, we need a way to just kind of reel that back a little bit and just give us more longevity in the battle. So I think Snarl is a good option for the fourth one because, you know, Flare Blitz, Fake Out, and Parting Shot are going to be your standard that you always bring. So I definitely think that's just another good utility option. And that's going to bring us to the final member of this team, Clefairy. This may seem a little weird, but I just kind of wanted something that would be, like, helpful because I feel like you're going to run into a situation where there's a lot of Okos flying around all the time because a lot of things can check everything else. So being able to be able to follow me, whatever you're seeing, onto Clefairy, I think is really cool. And especially with this team, if we're going to be getting up Trick Room fairly consistently, you know, there's things that could end up flying into your Pokemon, like a Taunt or a Sleep Powder. So I think you need to have kind of a more... I, did, I didn't want to have a Rage Powder Mon in case we run into a Grass Mon. So I wanted it, it to be a Follow Me Mon. But I think what's really interesting is that a lot of people are going to be calcing for sort of the base Pokemon plus items with what they can do for damage. So being able to have a helping hand on that to really do a little bit more damage I think is really important. Friend Guard, obviously, you know, they take three-quarter damage from Pokemon attacks. So just giving us a little more longevity. Again, that's super important. Heal Pulse giving us some longevity there as well. You know, really, Clefairy is just here to kind of stretch things out and give us a little more time there. And I think it's going to be a really great option for that. I decided to give it Shadow Ball as the means by which to self-proc um, policy on Calyrex Ice. I also like it because you can do like four times super effective damage to Calyrex Shadow. Um, which, I mean, it's goofy, but it actually is pretty good i think um and also is just kind of a way to deal good damage to marshadow because like you're gonna encounter these pokemon so we need a way to deal with it uh i suppose there could be an argument for something like a dazzling gleam or something but like i really wanted a way to practice policy and start kicking teeth in so i think clefairy is a pretty good way to do it and obviously you know we have our EV light there to make us very bulky which is just another really great option for us and that's going to bring us to our third and final team where i'm actually using marshadow and a couple other interesting strategies. So when Marshadow was first released back in Sun and Moon, it was a pretty big deal because at Fighting and Ghost type, it basically is able to do neutral damage against every Pokemon in the game with Stab. So nothing can resist both because of just the way things are laid out now. I think um, the only one that would be able to resist it entirely would be the um, Hisuian Zoroark, and obviously that's not going to be in this format because it's not in Sword and Shield. So... With that being said, I really feel like the main use of Marshadow is going to be stealing those boosts and then hitting back with them. So I think ultimately what you're going to need to have happen here is, you know, it's going to need to be a Choice Scarf attacker to be able to hit Mar uh, Zacian first. Uh, so you can take away that plus one attack and then hit them with it. Alternatively, you can take away boosts that you may get from like, you know, the Chilling Naze or the uh, Grim Naze. So being able to steal those is going to be really important. So that's why I went with the Scarf here. It can easily outspeed Calyrex or Zacian with it. Uh, so obviously I think that's a really important option. I think Spectral Thief is what you're going to be clicking 95% of the time. But we do want other moves on there. So I give it close combat. Obviously having a really strong second stab move. Um, Brick Break. I just want to be able... So this team is going to be very offensively designed. So I just wanted a way to bust through um, screens and stuff like that. Really, it, it's just there because it's utility. And I gave it knockoff like... If we happen to notice something like a, you know, whatever kind of Pokemon is scarfed and it's a problem, or, you know, you find out in game two that some Pokemon is like Goggles or Mental Herb, whatever, Sash, whatever you just can't deal with, Knock Off is just a good utility move just to have, just to kind of, you know, make your path to victory all that much easier. Now, that brings us to our Zacian. I kind of went for a different approach here. Behemoth Blade Play Rough. I went for Swords Dance because, again... A lot of Pokemon are going to be EV'd to live a lot of things now because we have a lot of bulky Mons in the format. 
So Sword Dance is a way to really make the Pokemon just that much more devastating. And, you know, a lot of times they may not expect it. They may expect, you know, your Protect first. So just something to kind of throw your opponent off and hit him with a big kind of Haymaker there. Uh, Kyogre, I decided to go super offensive. So we're not going to be using our um, typical, you know, Assault Vest. We're going to be using our Mystic Water. I gave it four attacks in Water Spout, Origin Pulse, Thunder, and Ice Beam. I definitely think there's an argument to be made for dropping one of those for a Protect. Um, probably, I would say out of all these, probably Thunder is the weakest one because we have Regilecki. Um, so if you wanted to go something like Protect here, I think that's probably fine and very justifiable. But that is going to bring us to our Regilecki, which I, I think is really, really cool. So we are using Light Clay with Screens, which is going to be really, really important, again, for that longevity. But we do have Electroweb as our speed setting source because... There's going to be so much speed tying in this format because of just how fast all the Pokemon are. And you want a way to reduce that to really gain speed control and be able to, you know, really stay on top of the tempo of the battle. But in addition, we have Eerie Impulse. So one of the things I really wanted to be able to do was see a Magearna and be able to neuter it like that. So Eerie Impulse is going to do that, dropping it to minus two special attack. It is still very strong, but being able to kind of just remove that turn of problems from the board is going to be really important. And if they happen to have Dynamaxed, you know, obviously even better because they're going to have now minus two special attack going into their Dynamax. So they kind of have wasted it. And really you get to capitalize on that quite a bit. Now, obviously this team is very fast and I wanted a solid answer for Trick Room. But what got me thinking is like, there's probably going to be a lot of mental herbs, a lot of goggles, a lot of, you know, redirection, just things like that. So how do I go about actually stopping Trick Room? And because we have so much raw power on this team, like Marsh Shadow's Aishi and Kyogre Regilecki, I decided to just say the heck with it and go Calyrex Shadow. So we have our Expanding Force and our Astral Barrage, but we also get Imprison and Trick Room. So instead of attacking, you're able to actually use Imprison and turn off their Trick Room so they don't have the option of using it, which is just really, really cool. And on top of that, if you happen to be using this team... And let's say your opponent is using a Whimsicott. If they get up a Tailwind, you can Trick Room. And then you're still going to be acting first because you are going to be having the speeds reversed after they doubled theirs. So I think it's just a really cool utility option. Again, this isn't like reworking the mold. Like this is a model we have seen before in competitive, you know, with Focus Sash and just dual stabs. But I, I think it's pretty solid. I really like it. And I think it is really a force to be reckoned with. And last but not least, I have Indeedee. I wanted a way to really capitalize on the expanding force being really solid. I also like, though, that Indeedee can really stand up to Marshadow. Um, you know, obviously, it can do neutral damage with, like, a fighting-type move, but it can't Spectral Thief it, so at least you have a way of kind of just curtailing how much damage it can do. Uh, Psychic Seed and Psychic Surge are going to be able to give you a plus-one special defense, making you quite a bit more bulky, and you have expanding force, follow me, heal pulse, and protect. Again, not reworking the mold here, but giving a lot of your Pokemon a little bit of longevity. Because if you have screens up and you can use Heal Pulse behind them to really make your Pokemon stronger, that's awesome. And, you know, having Follow Me to redirect moves away from any of the other five Pokemon on the team, really, it's going to be a really awesome way to prevent a lot of damage. Now, one thing I think is really, really cool, or not cool, but just interesting, you're going to be leaving a lot of restricted Pokemon on your bench because... If you bring so many Restricteds, there's only going to be some that are good for the right times, you know. So, while a lot of people think it's kind of heresy to leave your Restricteds back, it's going to be happening in this format because we have so many, which I think is really cool. So, I don't know. Those are my three teams I have for you guys again. We have our Marsh Shadows, Aishi, and Kyogre, Calyrex team here. Um, our Magirna Trick Room option here. And then, of course, the first team I showed you guys, the Sun Victini team. Honestly, I think the Sun Victini team is probably the strongest out of the three just because of how busted that Victini is. But again, let me know down in the comments below which one you would use, which one you think is the best. And, you know, let me know what, you know, Mythicals and which Restricteds you're going to be using because we do have 30 days to figure this format out, but I think this is really, really awesome. And I just can't wait to see what people are bringing. So that being said, though, let me know what you think about the format as a whole. Are you excited or you not? I want to hear from you, whatever you're feeling, because we are a community channel and your feedback is what makes all of this channel possible. All right, so there you have it, everybody. Season 13 of the online ladder for Pokemon is going to be completely bonkers. You're going to be able to bring whatever you want. So I, you know, 
I just cannot believe they did this. I'm super excited about it. I just want to see how crazy things can get. And I think it is honestly a very cool and interesting send off before we get Scarlet and Violet in November. But again, you know, that's what I think. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about the new format, the teams. And of course, let me know what teams you want to use for it because the innovation for this is wide open and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So that being said, that's all I have for you today, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. Again, if you did like the video, please make sure that you absolutely get impact that like button in the face. And as always, consider subscribing to the channel because again, it really does help us out and you get to become part of our amazing Pokemon community and you'll never miss any of the awesome videos just like this one. So that being said, everybody, please remember that the best Pokemon games are the ones that you love to play and the proper ways to play them. I'll hire you to have the most fun. Again, to all of our amazing viewers over in Ukraine, please make sure that you are staying safe in these crazy times. We want all of you guys to be safe and get through this as quickly as possible. And to everybody, all my amazing viewers, as always, I hope each and every one of you have a happy, epic, awesome, and amazing day. And I will see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.